After an unexpected one-day hiatus, Forecast Lab is back. Three days from now is the 50th anniversary of the sinking of the Edmund Fitzgerald. It went down with 29 crew members in the eastern side of Lake Superior. It's a reminder that the coastal and lake waters around the U.S. can be dangerous this time of year due to the warm water temperatures and the influx of progressively colder air masses. Cold air overlying warm air is the definition of unstable air, and those dangers can last well into the winter, as we saw with the great Buffalo ice storm of 2022. Across the U.S. this afternoon, we have a polar front moving through the Great Lakes and the Midwest states. This is a rather weak front. You can see the temperatures back behind it still in the 60s and 70s. But a much stronger push of cold air is coming out of the Dakotas and Minnesota. And further up north, quite a bit of cold air on tap. This is a thermal trough, an axis of very cold air, and that extends all the way into the Canadian High Arctic. This is a look at the Hudson Bay area. Here's Manitoba. And you can see this vortex drifting along with that cold air southward. And the western periphery of that advecting lots of cold air southward. And that will reach all the way to the Gulf Coast area by late weekend. As you can see, not much reflection of that vortex on the surface chart just a 10.03 millibar low. But it strengthens with height. 500 millibars, about 5 kilometers up in the atmosphere. We find a rather extensive area of low pressure. And that's because this is a cold core barotropic low. Here's one of those cross sections that you've seen us close out the program with. We've taken it well up north, we've got a west to east cross section through northern Canada, well, northern Manitoba, northern Saskatchewan, James Bay, and we do see a reflection of that colder air. The temperature isotherms in red, they sink downward, and the potential temperature lines bulge upward, and that's indicative of a cold dome, and that is what is pushing south into the U.S., and here's a jet stream on the periphery of that cold air across Saskatchewan. And here's that jet flowing out of northern Canada into Manitoba. I would say that qualifies as an Arctic jet. In the northeastern U.S., we have a warm conveyor belt feeding northeastward. That's bringing abundant tropical moisture northward. There still is some residual cold air at the surface from Pennsylvania to New York up to Maine, where temperatures are in the 30s. But down there in West Virginia, it is in the lower 70s. Anyway, we've got a pretty large area of moisture, as I mentioned there. The water vapor imagery shows that pretty well. And looking at the radar, we've got this band of showers and storms all the way from northern New York down towards Tennessee. The trailing end, that does have a risk of severe weather. And we focus on the southeast temperatures in the 70s with 80s on the Florida Peninsula. The SPC graphics show that area of potential severe weather. Here's a closer look at our area of concern. Nashville is right in here. They're pretty much in the center. And one particularly strong storm right there at the very end that is moving into that threat area. Any strong storms that do become dominant, they do have a risk of producing a tornado and high wind. That's due to moderate instability and favorable shear profiles. The radar loop, as we record this, does show a east-southeast movement. It does have some severe structure, a little bit of a bow echo appearance, and what looks like an enhanced updraft in the tail end Charlie area. So this will be a concern as it moves towards and just south of Nashville. The heat continues in Texas, 80s to Dallas and Shreveport, low 90s in Austin, San Antonio, and much of South Texas. The first large freeze watch for the lower southern plains has been issued. This covers almost all of Oklahoma, much of Arkansas, including the Fort Smith-Bentonville area, and down into the Wichita Falls and Seymour area. 
It doesn't extend all the way into Dallas, but we could see frost in parts of north and east Texas Sunday night. For the northern plains, that cold air mass is invading. Highs remained in the 30s in all of the northern half of Minnesota, northeastern North Dakota, further south, warmer air. We saw 60s in Chicago, Des Moines, and much of Nebraska. 63 for Denver and Pueblo. Yesterday, Lander, Wyoming, not sure exactly where that is, somewhere in here, they reached 69 degrees. Riverton reached 66. Both of those tied a record for the date. And further north in Montana, we have high wind warnings for most of northern Montana from Glacier National Park all the way to Haver and Lewiston, including Great Falls. West winds will gust to 65 miles an hour. And we also have a high wind watch for tonight and Saturday for all of the Rapid City region north and east of the city. Northwest winds will gust to 60 miles an hour. In the southwestern U.S., fair skies. Temperatures were near seasonal normals in the Great Basin, lots of 50s and 60s, mid-80s in the deserts, and in Southern California, 80 degrees at Los Angeles. High surf advisories and beach hazard statements in effect for much of the Southern and Central California coast, coastal flood advisories in the Bay Area for high tides. We have wind advisories in effect till 9 p.m. in the coastal ranges between Los Angeles and Monterey. We had gusts overnight in the 50 mile an hour range at Sandburg. Today, north winds will be gusting to 50 miles an hour, including in part of the I-5 corridor. And the heat. Yeah, the heat is coming back this weekend. By Monday, Los Angeles will be up to 92 degrees, Riverside 88 and 81 at San Diego. Lots of 80s and 90s up and down the Southern California coastal valleys. And a weak Santa Ana wind event will be in place so there will be concern for isolated wildfires. Then an onshore wind pattern develops by midweek, and we will see possible rain later in the week. In the Pacific Northwest, fair to partly cloudy skies, 40s in the mountain towns and the Bitterroots, 50s elsewhere, the warm spot 60 on the Oregon coast. Another Pacific system offshore, but this is heading mostly for British Columbia. It will be arriving later tomorrow. So we'll take a look at the unanalyzed Pacific and Canadian charts. There's that storm system that's going to be heading pretty far to the north. In fact, southeastern Alaska is going to get most of the brunt of that storm. Looks like a winter event there. That'll head inland for late Sunday and cross into the Northwest Territories for Monday. There's that energy coming out into the central part of Canada. The next system is upstream that will head into Oregon and California around Wednesday and Thursday. As far as what's happening right now, it looks like ridging along the west coast. But out in the Pacific, there is that powerful weather system that will be heading into British Columbia and southeastern Alaska. In Alaska itself, Anchorage saw seven inches of snow yesterday that set a daily record for them. Moisture continues to lift north where we have this onshore flow. We're expecting one to three inches in the interior this weekend, and that will gradually shift off into Yukon on Monday. And checking out things in Canada, there's that very cold ridge. We go way up north and we see temperatures minus 27. That's the coldest I've seen so far this season in that part of the world. So yeah, minus 27. We have 10 above here, 6. So basically this is the thermal trough and that is moving south. The pressures are not very high up there, only about 1030 millibars, but the flow overall is allowing a long conveyor belt of that cold air to slip pretty far south. So it's not really driven by the density and the pressure so much as favorable flow. And let us visualize that cold air with the temperature and pressure charts. And we do see the axis right in here across Victoria Island into far eastern Northwest Territory is much milder as you go to the west. So this is what's coming south, driven by a lackluster 1030 millibar high. So there it is, some of it extending into the U.S. You can see that the best cold air is still locked up up to the north, and it's being driven by this easterly flow more towards Yukon and Alaska. But we are getting into those pink and 
cyan shades, that means 0 to minus 20. We don't have any of the oranges that we typically see in the middle of winter. So most of this cold air will be flowing towards Alaska. And there it is. We're starting to get some very cold air in that part of the continent and starting to settle across this generation zone by next weekend. Not this weekend, but the next one. Temperatures falling down to about minus 20 around Inuvik, Old Crow, maybe Dawson. And it will kind of settle in around there. And that could be a breeding site for cold air outbreaks into Western Canada. We'll have to see how that shapes up, but right now it doesn't look like the pressures are all that high, only 10, 20 millibars. So that indicates that there's probably not a whole lot of vertical dimension to this cold air mass. And we'll just have to return to this next week and see if that changes. Now there is the potential for some very strong winds as this cold air comes south. The initial surge is not going to go very far. We need to wait for this wave to come out of Alberta. This is a little Alberta clipper. It's going to work around the periphery of that cold air. And then on the backside, we're going to see that air start to spill into the central part of the country. So here we've got very strong winds this afternoon. And we go through tonight and into tomorrow. There it is. There's that punch of cold air. 40 to 50 mile an hour winds across Wyoming, the Rapid City area, and that digs southeast into the central plains and more high winds along the leading edge of that cold front. So this is going to be a classic Texas blue norther. Looks like maybe some 30, 20 to 30 mile an hour gusts. There could be some locally higher gusts as well, maybe up towards 40 miles an hour. And you can see it strengthens across the Edwards Plateau, Central Texas. Saturday night, looks like some gusts up near 40 miles an hour are possible and very windy all along the post-frontal region of that cold air outbreak. And it will continue to be windy through Sunday. Looks like a lot of 30 mile an hour gusts across Texas and that cold air will spill out into the Gulf and into much of Northern Mexico as well. Here's how those overnight lows are looking tonight. Most of the cold air is going to be well up there into Minnesota and North Dakota. For tomorrow night, however, this is the wave coming from Alberta dragging that cold air southward. So we're going to see teens all the way down to Nebraska, 20s into Colorado and southern Nebraska, even Kansas actually. And for Sunday night going into Monday morning, that's the real cold air in the central part of the country. Freezing conditions all the way down to Memphis, down to Texarkana, Dallas, and Lubbock. Monday night is going to be especially bad in the deep south. Look at that, 32 all the way down towards Pensacola, 29 at Tallahassee. That is bitterly cold and a very, very hard freeze across the deep south. Alabama, central Mississippi, and 24 there for Nashville, 27 at Chicago. So, yeah, it's going to be pretty short-lived through Texas, Oklahoma. There will be a rapid warm-up, and then it looks like a return to mild weather for late next week and over the weekend. So the exciting part where we look at the forecast and look at the fronts and put everything into motion. Going into tonight and tomorrow... You can see that push of cold air doesn't go very far. However, it will remain quite cold up there in Minnesota, North Dakota, below freezing all day Saturday, north of a Duluth to Fargo line, 31 for Grand Forks, 40s as far south as Chicago and Omaha. And then Saturday night, overnight lows will remain in the teens across all of the Dakotas. Here is that thermal trough making its way south. I'm looking at the thickness pattern, the blue lines, and the 540 decameter line that usually is the snow transition line going all the way down towards Kansas. Then for Sunday, a very cold day across the central U.S. Highs in the 40s all the way down to the Ozarks, down to Oklahoma, and then Sunday night we see that hard freeze down to the Red River, parts of the Arklatex, and northern Louisiana. And I almost forgot to mention, as this front passes the Carolinas, it will link up with some of that tropical air, and there will be some risk of severe, but it will be a very short-lived severe window. 
Then going into Monday, bitterly cold across the eastern U.S., there's that thermal trough. So that is the area that's going to get the very hard cold weather. 20s for overnight lows as far south as Macon, Tallahassee, Jackson, Mississippi. So if you have any loved ones out there or any elderly people you know, make sure that they're good to go with their heating. Then we go into Tuesday. It looks like a dry Alberta clipper. This one not bringing very much cold air south at all, mostly affecting the Great Lakes and the northeastern U.S. And here's that next system in California. This is pretty far away. So we don't know the southward extent of the precipitation. There is some indication that we could see a couple of inches all the way down into southern California. Other models are indicating a very dry pattern. So we're just going to have to circle back to this early next week. And we take this on into Sunday, another Pacific weather system. This one moves inland, and that is our very last frame. And that will be all for this edition of Forecast Lab. You might want to mark your calendar for the night of November 16th. That's Sunday night, about nine days from now. The Leonids meteor shower. We're not expecting that to be a big one, but... You know, there's a little bit of unpredictability with meteor showers, so it may not hurt to go out and take a look. Anyway, my hope is that you got something informative out of this program. We will be back on Monday for the Supporters Show and on Tuesday on Veterans Day for everybody else. Hope you have a great weekend and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.